I genuinely play video games to study psychological and mechanic like psychological and mechanical things in games not necessarily for their enjoyment i i know that how that sounds but i don't really play games to enjoy the game themselves i still do just it's not my top priority i think the games that really get me going are games that break the mold. Uh, this one, it's it's a gem. I I say that. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, I can I agree with you if you know what that means. Like what I mean is if we're on the same page. I usually tell people or that I just academic. I like to academically understand game design from the developers and then try to find the emotional impact for the end user psychologically usually and then that's it uh game theory when i say studying game theory it means you know it can mean anything and uh i do say that though i i would say if you understand what I mean by game theory, then yes. Uh, like the theory of why why developers choose specific mechanics and where why they stopped here, why they stopped there. Like just the idea, trying to get to the... Uh, try to understand the developer's perspective. It's kind of like reading a book, but you're reading for the author's intent. You're not reading for your own enjoyment. So like, I'm curious about a book, because a certain person wrote it. Uh, I'm curious about a movie because people, specific people, made it and are aware of it. Then secondarily, I talk about my own emotions. But generally speaking, I, I'm old enough now, I suppose, and intellectually enough that it's not interesting what I think. It's more interesting. The game, the game is to figure out what they're doing. For me, game theory is the entirety of why a game is made and released in a process of creation, not necessarily how to make a game. That's fair. Uh, I would game theory is all of the above. No exceptions is what I'm saying. So not only did you exclude it, how necessarily how a game is made, sort of. Like, some people only think about how the game is made, but it's everything. Game theory is the process, the funding, the development of the game, so both the developer and the publisher's motivation, and then the end user's perception. That's game theory. So unfortunately, I don't use game theory because people choose what to see in game theory so they specifically to me personally are only interested in a specific aspect of game theory and uh i like to give the developers the publishers more empathy than they so desire i think there's a so in a way my personal bias is that I believe the end user is overrepresented and that's great for end users. Every form of end user has a voice. But generally speaking, the creators, that includes the people who decide to fund something or like evaluate a project to give money to a developer, all that stuff is underrepresented. And I do those publicly because it's nice to ground perspective. So when, when an end user says, this game looks like a PS2 game, well, I mean, it not only does not look like a PS2 game, it actually looks like something earlier, <laughs> a PS2 game. And the idea is 
Well, let me tell you a story about the appeal and the uptrend of retro gaming. And, and then, you know, briefly also talk about how Pierre Vandermeysen is a solo dev who's inspired by some very obvious things. So, you know, that's kind of the idea. Alright. And I love discussions about that. I play these games for those discussions, actually. Uh, sometimes uh, my entire uh, game session involves talking about the perspective. Um, and then, you know, someone will come in and say, Dude, where's the gameplay? Well, I play games. And I'm talking about the games. That's part of the gameplay. At least for myself. Like, this type of stuff, in my opinion, is part of the experience. Like, a game is so much richer when you know the motivations and appreciate what they trade off and, you know, compromise and certain appeals, not just playing the mechanical game. Um, it's kind of like a living life, oh, you know, like uh, living with life versus living to understand life. Always love that. I personally always love the games that are PS2 or older, so seeing the retro uptrend makes you happy. That's interesting. That also means you're selectively, you're pre-selecting to understand just that perspective. Uh, currently I'm playing, uh, currently I'm just, uh, chilling until the uh, next Like a Dragon game that's gonna come out in less than four days. But I see. It, it sounds like it. I, I mean, uh, it... The game that you cited is very retro, and this game interests you, so it's kind of very retro too. But you're very selective. Again, that that's fair. That confirms my uh, suspicions. I'm selective for pragmatic reasons. Like, I'm... Unfortunately for me, the only thing that restricts me from my preferences is the unfortunate short lifespan of mortality. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I, I, I'm being overly poetic. It's, it's more of a time issue and a resource issue. I don't think I have any emotional select selections. Oh, I do have some emotional selections. Everybody's short on time? That would be a very bold statement. Uh, considering a person's mind, state of mind. But it does feel like everybody is short on time, I would say. I would say not everybody feels they're short on time. In fact, I'd probably go as far as saying not everyone feels the same at any one time, about time. But I agree with you, because at any one time, someone's going to feel like they're short on time. If you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, let's see. You sleep four to five hours a day. It can feel like the day passed very quickly. Uh, there's a deep cut in there. Yeah, I, I see that. I don't think that that can affect someone's perception of being short on time.
Okay, so I have two folks. Can I... Oh, wait. I have to decide if I want a Tropador. So... The Minstrel? What did the Minstrel do? Dissonance. Attack up. I have Trobador all over my head right now because of yesterday. Trobador. Strongman doesn't work really well. I only have Minstrel and Strongman that are pretty okay. But we're gonna pick this guy up though. Um we can just dump Nick. Sorry, Nick. Grab the trope. Uh. Okay. We're still gonna use the trope as soon as possible. Uh, that means we can train Babu and Ronin as a replacement thief. I mean, I don't think we can use the rogue, right? Razor Blade is plus 15. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, no shield. We do need a shield. We already have Theology checked out. So... I don't think we need a mage. Oh, I remember. There is Shaman. We could use a shaman. I don't remember what the combo is for a shaman. Gotta get super aggressive. Where is good? It's shield and sword for a like a barbarian or something. I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Let's just... What that? Hunter is out. We can't do a hunter. Or not a hunter. But whatever the sharpshooter is. Because the baby is going to be in the back. Alright. I think we're okay. Still no relic. Okay. So Trobe is definitely middle. We have to use Ronin because out of slots. Get the baby the back. I don't want. Oh man, I have to protect the baby. <laughs> um, multiply resources. Okay. I can build an upgrade right now. Um, yeah. Pretty sure a mage, a mage is a temple, temple training and a magic training. Uh, we can get amulets from here, I hope. The ancient runes. Oh no, I forgot the ancient rune is above the city. Um, I think we're okay, right? Oh, can you stop, please? You need to stop. Oh, uh... Okay. 
fine. Dang you, you old butthead. Yes, the ghosts. The ancient ruins is a graveyard. Yeah, there's one of everything, basically. Uh, uh, I they uh, he covers most of his bases. So you know you got you still got your like pyramids, right? Your snake, your swamps. It's got to get it all covered up. I don't think we can take out the boss with this setup. That's not gonna. Happen. We're looking for an amulet, but there's a chance the amulet only drops if we do the thief guild enough. Oh, that the trove into the cry is really good, actually. Uh huh. Okay, we're definitely keeping a minstrel, so... I don't think we're gonna go saint. Dang it. contemplating well we would have to start over now so this is uh if the baby dies where we we start over and this is just the hard one so uh we're trying to uh exercise caution not losing it uh it's still a knowledge check, so I, I leave I leave knowing that I have enough time, I think. Yes. <laughs> uh, I guess it's how how greedy I wanna get. A guard. So if I pick up a guard, does it matter the order? I don't remember if you shield train if you have a shield train and then you do a weapons train, it leads to the same thing? Or does the order matter? I don't think the order matters. Because I'm looking for... Melee training for this guy. Yeah, it creates the knight, regardless of the order. Am I looking for a knight? I just tank. Hmm. I think you can just go all aggression most of the time. And be okay. I'm just recruiting it because I need someone. Uh, okay. I don't know if the camp increases our... Oh, and we have Theo, right? We have access to theology now. Um, this is Mage, yeah. Ah, uh, that's weak. I forgot what the saint's ability is. Oh, wait. 
Saints. Burn. Right. It's 15. So I can combo the Saint with the min Minstrel. So I think we're still gonna go Saint. Unfortunately, we don't have enough money. Fine. 13 days left. That seems okay. So what? For the very hard, we'll probably still start with a tavern first. Okay. Um, we have four slots. Okay. <clears throat> oh, right. We have our warrior. Okay. It's not too bad. I think we can take out a boss with this. Famous last words. Uh, no, wait. So now the baby becomes a problem because... Oh, wait. If a baby has to always go into battle, does that mean I can't upgrade the baby? Or... You can upgrade the baby while going to battle. Wait, that's OP as heck. <laughs> like, uh... What? And what I mean is, uh, you have to wait. So, uh, generally speaking, when you're upgrading something, the character is out of commission, right? Like, but I want the baby to go into battle while uh, waiting for the upgrade. So you don't you don't have to wait for the baby to be upgraded. That's that's kind of nice because you can just play it safe while the baby is upgraded. The guys have to stay back. So they have to they can't be used while being upgraded, which is fantastic. It saves me a turn. It's always it's what I wanted. <laughs> It's so awkward. It's just what I wanted. Um, alright, I think the baby is largely safe, right? Alright, we're gonna risk it for the biscuit, right? It deals damage, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, actually we can probably, we can still see it. It's a uh, plus five, plus five to the baby's attack. But that's a lot for a cry. That's huge. Like the baby's like OP as heck. The, the problem is the baby doesn't have a lot of HP. Um, Is the baby safe though? I think I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. Let's go to Setopia first. Yeah, I remember this. The guard is like, eh, not so hot. Oh no, I, I can't risk it for the biscuit yet. The baby hasn't been upgraded. <laughs> not yet. just farm this place. I'm gambling with the baby's life without the stinky poopy thing. It's fine. Uh, it's fine now, I think. I was just testing how if the if the baby can get insta gift. That's pretty close. So we can't go past this place without armor upgrade. It gets worse later. The back row can be targeted.
didn't even get to the AoE stuff yet. I have so much HP. I need more damage. Man, I actually think the Ancient Runes is... It's safer. It's interesting. Yeah, they are tanking as heck. This is... This one's rated even lower than the... Here. Am I safe without the poopy pants? Still safe. Sure. I'm kind of scared of one encounter in here. I, I, I need to milk. We need to make our uh, our runs count. Oh uh, no, this isn't the one I'm afraid of. This is a reference. Oh, saint has burn. So once we uh, train the priest into a saint, we can go after uh, the robot, robot guy. Dang it! Why do you have to be a poison guy? I want to save the priest. So we're trying to. Uh, the priest healthy. If we can, save another guy too. Ah, so close. They're both injured. Or are they? Yeah, they're both injured. Which is a, uh, yes, Pied Piper. You got it. That's it. It's kind of funny because that last unit was a hobo. <laughs> but if you really think about it, right? Pied Piper. <laughs> yeah, you, you nailed it. That, that's what I think is the reference. Like, uh, it's so odd. Of all the characters this guy designed, putting four rat, like, four rats with a hobo, you nailed it. I, I think that's what the guy was going for here. There's just too, it's just way too, way too uh, hard to ignore. Uh, okay. So the baby, let's see if the baby got an upgrade. Dude, I think the I think the baby's pretty OP. What the heck, man? All right, so we need armor upgrade. There goes all our gold again. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so the ranger is one, and I'm pretty sure it's not the hunter. It might be a sniper or something. For two hunter training, and then the hunter is like. Hunting training and blade or something and sword training or melee training. The well, hunter is not hot. But we have no money. No money. 
Can't even upgrade the baby's rattle. So we have the trobe. That's not good enough. Oh, wait. How much does it take to train 300? We can sell some stuff. Not enough, unfortunately. That stinks. We do have that one thing now. So maybe we can try to get an artifact. <clears throat> Wait, oops. I was resting. Might lose this guy. things have so many and you're like yeah yeah uh i uh i enjoy those moments quite a bit actually if you know what i mean i love it when uh someone's like did you know it's like no i didn't that's amazing Especially indie games. Man, indie games have references all over the place, right? They're no slouch to, uh... To taking those leaps. And they like referencing each other a lot, too. Although, uh, this excludes... This usually excludes solo dev games. But, uh, the slightly larger productions, they like to allude to each other. Like, un un unashamedly. But generally speaking, the solo devs, they take like the theme, the holistic theme. So that in itself is already the referential thing. Like, Pierre, uh, there's, if I sat down and interview with the dev of this, there, it's clear that he's like, well, if you didn't get that already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they wear it on a sleeve, you know, their whole game design is worn on their sleeve. So if they were able to throw in a little bit of uh, like direct explicit illusions, that's fantastic too. But generally speaking, their whole game ends up being in homage to something. Like, uh, what's his name? Carton? Um, Prince Aaron Ape? Dardu Valley? Right? I think is. I keep forgetting his last name. Eric is his first name. Uh, Barone. Yeah. Yeah, Eric Barone. Or Baroni? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Sorry. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. Come on, amulet. One game that's definitely on my list right now uh, to um, to hit up that I haven't gotten to is uh, Chained Echoes. I think it's Chained Echoes. Or is it Chained Memory? Chain Echoes, yeah. Solo Dev. The other Solo Dev of recent indeed indeed uh eric uh eric barone's uh story is very much that oh i should put the baby Ooh, i should put the priest second so that Okay, so once I have five units, the baby has to be next to um, the minstrel.
I put the priest in a in a weird spot. Oh, you've been waiting on a game? Oh yeah, I know that feeling, man. Uh, also, uh, it's also uh, outside of the... This is slightly an extension of a solo dev thing. I buy, I uh, tend to, whenever I have time, invest in um, EA games, like early access games, and uh, waiting for the ones that I'm excited, like that I'm particularly interested in because of their what they were saying the game was um tough waiting <laughs> this game was not in early access of course uh and it's an extension of solo dev solo devs tend not to uh do the incredibly like five plus years of solo uh of solo early access stuff it's smaller groups tend to do the whole early access period thing. You got burned too many times? Fair enough. It's a very reasonable emotional response. It's a very, very familiar emotional response as well. trying to figure out if how I'm gonna try to save the trobador from being injured here I don't think I can know that poison stack nah can't all right You will follow Access Games and wait for the full release. That's fair. I did buy an early accident recently called Thronefall. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, all, all early access games do come with a discount, right? Uh, as to offer, like most now, it's a, it's a standard set by. There are a lot of games that I would site as standards but i think the one that i'll go with is hollow knight i would say if i had to take one example of like a it's discounted until the 1.0 launch that also rise the ranks of millions probably hollow knight Very play it so the game completely changed. You're still my mother. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. <clears throat> Holy shield. Oh, oh, that was the theology thing. Uh. 
Okay, so we got our econ. The last game that reached is 1.0. That I played the base game to completion is Across the Obelis. It's probably the one. Oh, actually, yes, it's Across the Obelis. And a little before that was Gordian Quest. And then before that was. Uh, Grifter. Drifter. Something Drifter. Oh no. I don't remember this. Oh, Grifflands. Right. Play. Play Entertainment. You had that happen before early access where the game, yeah, and then they abandoned it, yeah. Across what now? Across the obelisk. It's a deck builder. It's a deck builder, uh, darkest dungeon. Yeah, so it's a combination of darkest dungeons, uh, positional format, and then deck building, which is kind of a mix. Uh, the deck building is largely still representative of Darkest Dungeon's mechanics, but the deck building itself is built upon foundations probably Slay the Spire. So we're, we're using like the latest popularization. It's Slay the Spire card battling with Darkest Dungeon's micromanagement. And Guardian Quest is Diablo, like it's action RPG deck building with the team, uh, with a grid system. Um, and the grid system does the positional stuff with initiative rolling. It is, it still is. Yes. Across Diablos is still going. Fortian Quests, as of the last year, is not going anymore. It doesn't look appear that way. And Grifflands is also a deck builder, but this one uses a, a rock, paper, scissors mechanic, which is uh, different actually. It didn't use the same uh, stuff, but it did take on the uh, CRPG format for storytelling. And then it uses a uh, a die system, so uh, a number number combat system. Uh, let's see. So like, it's my number bigger than your number. So all the modifiers are run around numbers. That's a very unique thing. Uh, I I don't. It, it's hard to describe, but it, it's wonderful. <laughs> it it doesn't use. It didn't inherit a system. For its core. Yeah. Um, the closest thing I would say for Grifflands is it's a Highlander game. So it's closer, closest to a commander, commander deck builder. So where um, you have a character that's boosted by a singular Highlander character, uh, boosted by the effects of your character. So like when you're in an intrigue diplomacy, you're cards or your formatted uh, outlook um, loadout is supposed to boost your character 
and then your character is performing that task. So no team-based thing. It's a Highlander format. Which is kind of like Slay the Spire, because Slay the Spire also used a Highlander format, like your character being boosted by it, so it's still a deck builder in that regard. Yes, it's a visual novel in the sense of CRPG. So it's a uh, CRPG approach where you have lots of dense dialogue, you have some consequential but largely flavor text approach stuff, and it has choice matters based on the confrontation. And uh, the confrontation type is based on your choice. So it's kind of like back in the day of CRPGs. More, we're thinking more like Bioware, Bethesda structure, as opposed to uh, VN games like multi-webbing games like uh, the Japanese, the many Japanese developers who write like multi-webbed stuff. Um, the decision making is mechanical and uh, it's uh, CRPGs, computer RPGs, like Baldur's Gate. Shout out to Lorian Studio. <laughs> Larian Studio. Speaking of early access games, they had a very long wait. They had a wonderful 1.0 launch. Uh, let's see. 